Hey, this is Nathan Crane here with you today, and this is going to be a short but sweet and hopefully very practical podcast for you. Um, We're talking about injuries and primarily the five steps that I have found to recover from injury much faster than uh, not doing these five things, okay? And, um, you know, whatever injury you have, whether it's a broken bone or it's a sprained um, or torn ligament, or it's a, you know, a, a muscle sprain, or whatever it might be, whether it's from sports or just from everyday life. You know, if you do these things, then uh, you're going to be able to recover faster, heal quicker, which obviously means you can get back to your training, to your sports, to your athleticism, and just you know, being pain-free um, in your daily life. So- Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week, we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. So, just a quick little background. Um, I've been injured a lot. (laughs) I grew up doing uh, a lot of extreme sports, snowboarding, uh, BMXing, skateboarding, um, a lot, and getting injured all the time. Now, as a kid, I recovered very quickly, even with poor nutrition, with no experience of you know, healing, but I did uh, take a lot of ibuprofen. I actually got quite addicted to ibuprofen uh, for quite a while. I think I was taking like 12 ibuprofens a day, which I do not recommend that to anybody. Um, Those were not healing me. They just masked the pain. They help a little bit with inflammation, but also are very damaging to uh, the kidneys, to the liver, and to the gut as well. So, there are much better things that now I've learned um, in recovering from injuries, specifically when I started CrossFit in September, October of 2017, within the first few months, I had been injured like three times. The next six months, uh, injured a couple more times. The next few months after that, injured a couple more times. And this had absolutely nothing to do with CrossFit. People say, oh, CrossFit causes cause a lot of injury. And it's not CrossFit that causes the injury. It's the lack of knowledge and awareness around the physiology and around your own uh, body awareness and where you're at physically and then doing things you shouldn't be doing because you don't have the mobility, the flexibility, or the neural connection that you need to do specific movements or uh, the weights that you're lifting, that sort of stuff. So <clears throat> for me, you know, it was a sprained uh, ligament. It was uh, injured uh, AC joint, was uh, back issues, back pain. Um, hip issues, um, all kinds of different things going on, shoulder impingement, you name it. And so the more I got injured, the more I got interested in, number one, preventing these injuries, but also healing them quickly. And so step number one uh, that I've, you know, you might think, well, yeah, duh, Nathan, that's a no-brainer. But, you know, Stick with me for a moment on this because this is one of the most important things about uh, injuries is uh, step number one is to prevent injuries in the first place. Now, the reason that obviously helps you heal from injury quicker is because you don't get injured and then you don't have to worry about healing from it. But this is probably the most important thing is, yeah, accidents happen, mistakes happen, things like that, right? Some things are out of our control and, and you just deal with that. But a lot of injuries from what I'm learning through my own experience, can be prevented in the first place. And how you do that is listening to your body, paying attention to when things are giving you a little bit of that nagging pain or a little stinging or a little, you know, um, being aware of not jumping into something too quickly. Let's say you're just starting running, for example. When I started running and training for an ultra marathon, I had no running background and I got injured running. Why? Because I started running 
three or four or five miles a day without building up any kind of you know base volume before that so before you run five miles you should run a half a mile or one mile and see how that feels give yourself a day to rest and then the next day maybe run another mile see how that feels give yourself a day to rest then maybe work up to a mile and a half and then two miles and you know what happens with us um, oftentimes I know what happens with me is I have a goal or I want to experience or achieve something and I jump in and start doing too much too quick and that's how most often you get injured quickly that's what happened to me is starting CrossFit I started doing kipping pull-ups and butterfly pull-ups and uh, Olympic lifting and snatching uh, before I ever had the mobility of flexibility or the tendon strength or ligament strength that I needed to even do those movements and so that was my own fault Again, it's not CrossFit's fault, it's my fault for jumping in too quickly, doing too much. So really, paying attention to your body, and if you're starting something new that you haven't really done before, really ease into it. Really take your time, be patient with it. If you can do that, you're going to prevent most injuries from happening in the first place, as well as if you can focus primarily on mobility and flexibility first and foremost before you start getting into any kind of you know olympic lifting or any kind of new sport or any kind of new activity you know start doing yoga start doing uh stretching start doing mobility practices a lot of free stuff on youtube you can find on mobility and do a 10 12 15 minute routine every day it's going to help you so much uh even if you're an elite athlete you, you know the elite athletes in any sport they're focusing more attention time energy and money on recovery on mobility on flexibility on uh, a lot of these things I'm going to share with you more time and energy and money on that than they are the actually the actual training so it shows you how important that is okay so number one prevent injury in the first place number two really focus on your sleep number one about sleep is that you have to get into deep sleep and deep sleep is beyond REM sleep it's beyond r rapid eye movement it's beyond the dreaming phase it's actually deeper than dreaming and when you get to deep sleep that's when your body produces human growth hormone that's when your body recovers and repairs itself the best and the only way to get there is to make sure all your screens are turned off you're not falling asleep watching tv uh, there's no lights in your room anywhere you're at a comfortable temperature so we did a whole podcast on the science of sleep suggest so you you find that uh, on itunes the science of sleep activating greatness podcast if you really want to know what you can do to improve your quality of sleep but these are just some of the key points um, uh, as i was saying your temperature body temperature you're comfortable you're not sweating you're not too cold um, and you're in a really comfortable bed and you're not having caffeine at all in the afternoon all these different things are going to help you sleep deeper and really important you need to sleep longer at least eight hours ten hours is ideal so yeah how can i sleep that much i work so much i have family i guarantee you if you if you get home from work let's say six seven o'clock right and you have dinner you hang out with your family for a couple hours and you don't turn on the tv you can get to bed by nine o'clock most people by ten o'clock right most people don't have to wake up before six a.m again there are certain cases where that's not true but most people don't have to wake up before 6 a.m. Some can even wake up at 7 a.m. or after. If you're in bed by 10 p.m. at the latest and asleep, guess what? If you're waking up at 6 or 7 a.m., that's eight to nine hours of good quality sleep. So important for healing and recovering from injury faster and for so many other areas of your life as well. The third step, be patient. This is so important with the injury, with recovering, with healing. You know, you don't want to jump into activities too quickly and you also don't want to sit around and do nothing. There's that fine balance between movement, mobilizing the affected area, getting blood flow to it, getting it moving so that it doesn't build up too much scar tissue. And then, you know, a lot of people end up uh, in worse condition where they can't even move their arms or their joints or their feet or something, right? They get frozen shoulder, things like that because they're not moving it enough. But also, don't get into strength training too quickly. Don't get into movements that are causing pain. Um, just be patient with it. Allow the time to heal because then if you, if you do that, uh, then you're going to be able to get into your activities much faster. 
Um, whereas like what happened to me, oh, I start feeling better after two or three weeks and then boom, I immediately go in to the movements that caused the issue in the first place or into Olympic lifting or into weight training or something like that too quickly and then injured again. Now I can't use it for another two or three weeks and this would go on and on as it starts feeling better. Oh my gosh, jump in again too quickly and then you know, I'm dealing with the injury for four months, five months, six months and it's just it's horrendous whereas now you know i had kind of a an issue flaring up in my back and and i learned from it it was patience that okay i'm not going to do any movements that would cause that any pain for at least three weeks and then i'm mobilizing and i'm doing um uh qigong and i'm doing uh chiropractic and things like that which you know we'll get into that in in step five but doing things that um are not going to antagonize it any worse and doing things that are actually going to improve it um, without jumping into anything too heavy. So taking my time getting back into the, the movements and getting back into the weight training and that sort of stuff where, you know, it's more physical therapy related, you know, lighter weight, more reps, those kinds of things. So just being super patient and, and recognizing and accepting, you know what, if I <clears throat> give myself four to six weeks for this to really heal, maybe seven weeks, maybe eight weeks, maybe up to 90 days or so, depending on you know, the severity of it. But I give myself the proper time for it to heal. Um, then I could heal this in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, instead of three months, four months, five months, six months, right? So being patient will pay off in the long run. Uh, the fourth step, uh, I would highly recommend to use a CBD product. I started using CBD from Performance T. It's called Recovery CBD Plus. This is probably the best CBD product um, that I found. We actually sell it through Crane Factor because we love it so much. I use it every day. Um, it's really high quality CBD. These are all non-GMO, no pesticide ingredients, and it's combined with adaptogens. So other healing powerful herbs that help reduce inflammation and help the body heal and recover faster as well as help you sleep deeper. So we did a whole podcast just on CBD and the science of CBD and it will blow your mind at how powerful CBD is for so many aspects of just living healthier, feeling better, sleeping deeper, recovering faster, reducing inflammation, so many benefits. I highly recommend this particular product because it's the only one on the market that is combined with adaptogen herbs, healing powerful herbs that, that are synergistic so that it's CBD plus all the other ingredients that are helping you heal faster. You can get this at our website, cranefactor.com and, uh, and try it out, highly recommend it. But use a CBD product to help you recover faster. And then number five, really important, get help, right? Don't try and do this on your own. Don't try and recover from an injury on your own. Super important. I found the things that are helping me recover much faster. I'm doing Qigong every day following uh, Master Ming Tong's program called Awaken Vitality. That's through the Qi Center, C-H-I-Center.com, Qi Center. Um, he's a master Qigong teacher. And the Qigong is mobilizing the spine, healing the body, but also connecting with the energy and allowing the energy to move through the body uh, faster and better for healing. Um, there's also sound healing. There's also meditation, visualization, all these things. Uh, there's a lot of studies showing how they help your body heal and recover and energize and, and feel better. Um, so something like Qigong, uh, a yoga practice, um, and I started seeing a chiropractor. And within just a couple of weeks of these combinations of things, man, you see healing, recovery so much faster from injuries. So going to a physical therapist, um, following physical therapists. I follow about six or seven physical therapists on YouTube. I'm watching their videos every day. I'm learning from them. I'm learning new uh, techniques, understanding the body better, understanding um, biomechanics and understanding how to become more mobile and flexible while also strengthening the area, how to recover from uh, these injuries faster as well as how to prevent them in the first place. So get help. If you get that professional help, again, chiropractors, physical therapists, Qigong teachers, that sort of thing, um, you're going to recover so much faster than just trying to sit around and do it on your own. I know that's been true for me.
And, uh, and I hope these tips really help you, uh, number one, prevent injury in the first place, and number two, recover from injuries faster so you can get out there in the world, do what you're doing, and just crush it and activate the greatness that's already within you. That's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode.